Oumuamua was our first observed interstellar visitor. Many still question whether it is an asteroid, a comet, or an alien spaceship. Its trajectory altered in ways scientists struggled to explain, and the comet hypothesis was difficult to explain as there was no outjetting of gas seen. Recently, we have actually detected a second interstellar visitor to our solar system, but this appears to be more like a normal comet. And can this lead us to a better understanding of what comets are and where they actually come from? Scientists believe that comets are large lumps of dust and ice left over after star system formation. Ours are thought to reside in what is called the Oort cloud. And when they get disturbed, they fall inwards towards the sun with extreme elliptical orbits. And as they approach the sun, it is believed that some of the ice starts to vaporize and this forms the tail that we see. However, recent flybys and landings on comets have revealed anything but ice surfaces, instead pointing to a rocky body. An international team of astronomers for the first time ever have been able to detect gas molecules in this interstellar visitor. This is an important step in understanding the composition of comets and this will help astronomers to try and understand how star systems form and if one system is different to another. Comet Borisov was discovered by an amateur astronomer in August. Detailed observations over the next 12 days showed that it was not orbiting the Sun but was passing through our own solar system. Astronomers pointed the William Herschel telescope at the comet and passed the faint light from this comet through a spectrograph, and this enabled them to detect individual types of gas by their spectral fingerprints. The gas they detected was cyanogen, which is made of carbon atoms and nitrogen atoms bonded together. It is a toxic gas, but it is believed to be a relatively common occurrence in comets. They also used the opportunity to examine the dust being ejected to determine its size. And their preliminary results show that much of the surface of the comet is active, and this is in stark contrast to normal comets. They conclude that the most remarkable thing about the comet is that it appears ordinary in terms of the gas and dust it is emitting. It looks like it was born with the other comets in our solar system, yet it has come from an unknown star system. The Electric Universe concept is that comets are nothing more than asteroids which have a different potential to their surrounding, and these objects spend most of their time at the extreme edge of our solar system, which has a different charge potential to the inner part. And when they approach the Sun, a charge imbalance develops between the nucleus and the higher voltage and charge density near the Sun. And as the electric stresses start to grow, discharge takes place and a plasma sheath develops which appears as the coma and the tail. The observed jets are the electric arc discharges which will cause electrical machining to the surface of the comet. And the excavated material is accelerated along the jets into space. At the position the comet is, it is within the accepted range for the size of the tail and the coma that we see. But when they analysed the dust being ejected, they realised that the whole surface of the comet was active. And this is very different to what happens to all the other comets that we have observed. And this tends to support the idea that this comet has a very different charge potential to our solar system, and therefore is active across the entire surface due to this. The second point relates to the cyanogen gas current theory tells us that this is one of the primordial elements that are left behind after star formation, yet it differs from all our planet's compositions. Why are we not seeing a mixture of different molecules? Now a big thank you to Problem Being who pointed me in the direction for some of these articles. And in a totally unrelated experiment, scientists have manufactured cyanogen gas using a plasma jet of nitrogen and using a carbon electrode. So rather than assuming that these molecules must reside in the nucleus, what if cyanogen was being produced due to the arcing tail? 
and this would mean that the comet must be made of mainly carbon and maybe some frozen nitrogen. But at the same time, this also reminds me that in the Sapphire project, they were able to transmutate elements and one of the elements they produced was carbon. So is it possible that the arcing process is creating carbon, which is then reacting in the plasma jet with nitrogen? Now, this is an interesting concept, but it does present some issues at this stage. Firstly, it is odd that the only gas that they have detected is cyanogen. When ESA sent the Giotta spacecraft through Halley's Comet, they detected the following molecules, 80% water, 10% carbon monoxide, and 2.5 mix of methane and ammonia, and only trace amounts of hydrocarbons, iron, and sodium. So why are we not seeing the majority of this as water, or some reactant to that, or the carbon monoxide? So if, in our assumption, that the core was mainly made of potentially nitrogen, then obviously we would expect to see traces of nitrogen gas being emitted along with the cyanogen which is being reacted. So at this stage it's hard to see that that reaction would be 100%. You would expect it to be an imperfect reaction and therefore there should be trace amounts of nitrogen. And equally if it's a carbon core with frozen nitrogen the same thing would still hold. Now it is possible that the reason that we're not seeing any of the nitrogen or other elements is because at the moment the cyanogen gas dominates and therefore is, is masking the fact that there are other molecules in there. And as the comet approaches closer to the sun, maybe if we take more measurements, we will be able to confirm the actual composition of the gases being jetted out from the comet itself. And hopefully we'll see more than just cyanogen. This topic is one that I would like to delve into more detail to, to look at the different theories of comet formation, particularly relating it to a plasma and electric universe. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.